Hi everyone, my name is Sangyap Lee, who will be presenting this paper, BZNet, Unsupervised Multiscale Branch Zooming Network for Detecting Low-Quality Defect Videos. I am from Songkyunkwan University, which is in Korea. So I might, I think you guys might have uh, heard about defects, which is basically a synthetic media in which a person in an existing image or video is replaced with someone else. So if you look at the left part of the sample, uh, the actress is changed with Nicolas Cage uh, face. And if you look at the uh, right part, there's an actor who acts and the President Obama and Putin is following the lips and facial expressions. So these can be very uh, critical to our society. Uh, the thing that we uh, try to focus here is that Defects are usually spread out through social media platforms. And if that is happened, it will be sometimes compressed to LQ videos, low quality, which can take uh, less storage. And sometimes the attacker who wants to attack a victim can intentionally lower the quality of the videos. The problem of this, uh, this uh, lowering the quality is that you can actually weaken the features to distinguish defects. If you look at this part, so the right left part is raw videos, but C23 means compressed a little bit, which is something like 23% and 40 is 40%. So if you look at the raw video, there are some features that you can actually tell that these are defects. If you look at the facial mask, there are a square kind of uh, rectangular kind of shape here. But if it's degraded to C40, then those kind of features can be very diminished. diminished. And the overlay of raw minus C40 means the difference between the raw image and the compressed one. So there are a lot of difference, which we have to really focus on detecting. So that is our focus. So problems with uh, state-of-the-art defect detectors previously is that if these kind of compression of the video has happened, then uh, the model's performance uh, degrades a lot. And for those models, the model input, deep learning models, input image scale is fixed, which means we have to resize the image or videos to feed inside the model. So it's actually very challenging to extract diverse patterns from different Im image scales. And actually these kind of models always test on benchmark data sets and they do not test on real world defect videos which is out there in the internet. So we uh, try to address these kind of problems in our uh, work. So these, th uh, these three are our uh, contributions. So what we do is we tried to use multi-scale images with a single model. And how we do that is that we try to enhance the quality of low quality images or videos to detect these kind of LQD fakes. And we only util utilize LQD fake videos. We do not use any high quality videos for training to like uh, hint the model. And secondly, how we use the multi-scale and how we enhance the quality of low quality uh, videos is that we utilize unsupervised super resolution technique, which I will introduce later. And uh, we also use different scale images. And sometimes we, uh, sorry, we use diff uh, five different scales when we are training the model. So I will go into details in the later section. And finally, we tried our model on five fake image data sets, which also includes a real world defect the wild data set that we collected through online. So defect in the wild data sets, these are real world data sets, uh, uh, videos that is uh, available online. So it's usually celebrities who are replaced with replaced and some actors are replaced with some other actors, something like that. And since it's, uh, since it's over the internet, the quality of the video is very relatively low as you can see on these kind of 
images. And it's very hard to tell it's fake or not because it's also generated by deep learning. So how we detect these kind of low quality defects, I will explain into two phases. So first phase, phase uh, is about training branch zooming module, which is trying to enhance the low quality if images. And the second phase is trying, uh, the model utilizes, uh, uses the, uh, uh, sorry, enhanced images. And with, we will have uh, five different scale images. And those five, the five different scale images will be passed through a single classifier. Uh, that's why we call it multi-scale classifier training. So for the first phase, I'll talk about three different loss functions, which we try to uh, implement in our model. Uh, so if you look at the image, there is a LQ image. Sorry, I'll uh, use a pointer. There is a LQ image, low quality image, which is only 128, 128 pixels. It'll go inside a encoder. And we will have N different decoders, which is uh, trying to enhance the quality uh, using unsupervised super resolution technique. And we will have a uh, N number of super resol resolution images here. So 128 by 128 will go up 192 and 256. How we are going to train this super resolution uh, PZ module is we will use discriminator and a VGG16 model, which is a, so discriminator model is just a classifier, which tries to classify if the given image is a from a super resolution technique. And we also use a other domain high quality image that is not from defix. It can be like a cat image or tree image, which is high quality. So we're not using any high quality defect images. So the, what discriminator is trying to do is that it discriminates, it distinguishes if the given image is from the super resolution technique or it's a real uh, high quality image. So by doing that, we can uh, train our n number of branches to enhance the quality of the given image. And by, uh, while enhancing the image, we also want to follow the uh, style and the context of the given image. So that's why we use VGG16 model here, which is trying to calculate the L uh, perceptual loss. So perceptual loss function is to guide the super uh, processes. So after we feed the SR image to the VGG16 and the regular uh, LQ image to the VGG16, it tries to minimize the dis distance inside after uh, passing the VGG16. So after uh, minimizing that loss, then we can have a SR image, which is very close to the low quality image. So LID here on the top is just to get a overview of the super resolution uh, high quality image. So if we uh, use three kind three, three oh so we, sorry we use three different kind of losses and the first LID which one which is just here red part it tries to uh, use the other domain high quality image and it calculates the reconstruction error using MSE. And the second adversarial loss, which we use discriminator and which, uh, so this one tries to distinguish if it's from an SR image or from the, it's a real high quality image. So we calculate the adversarial loss, which was uh, first introduced in GAN generative adversarial loss, uh, oh, sorry, network uh, paper. So, and the third loss is perceptual loss, which is basically calculating the input, which is passed through VGG uh, pre-trained pre -trained network and tries to minimize the distance between those two. So the final, final loss function will be uh, adding up all of these three loss functions with a gamma, which is also adjustable. 
So that is done with phase one. So after we after acquiring some different uh, size of SR images, we want we wanted to uh, use all those images with a single model. And the reason why we do that is that we wanted to capture different features from other scales. So for basically conventional pre-processing step to train the model, which is like CNN models, is to resizing the image into one. But since uh, like classification models these days, you uh, usually use global pooling layers, average or maximum, uh, which this makes as possible to use multi-scale images. What even if you have different image sizes coming into through the network, if you use global pooling layers before the last linear layer, then you will have a same number of features inside the latent space. That's why we can uh, use all different kinds of size images. So for us, we use LQ images and we also use bicubic rescaled images, which is just copying uh, pixels. And we also use uh, SR images, which is upscaled by 192 and 256. The final model uh, classifies all inputs, all these images, and we uh, calculate the cross entropy loss with these all images. After uh, training, when we test, we use two different kind. Of, we try two different kind of prediction strategies. So first one is we will have different output logits from each uh, resolutions. Uh, and we all ensemble those logits. And finally, we will calculate the, uh, calculate the probability of being uh, fake. And the, the second one is we try to select the best performing scale of all the images. And we try to compare these, uh, these two with the auto model, other models. And we tried uh, five different, sorry, six different data sets here. Oh, sorry, five. And one is real, which is basically uh, real videos. Videos, And we utilize deep fake and face swap, face-to-face -face and neural textures, which is from face forensics and it's compressed by 40%. There's another data set called deep fake detection challenge, uh, which is from Facebook. And we also collected from online deep fake in the wild data set. Uh, not only videos, we also tried on uh, different fake image data set, facial data, data sets, which is GAN generated, uh, style GAN and PG GAN. Evaluation settings, we only train with uh, face forensics plus plus data sets. And we, for DFDC here and DFIC in the wild, we only use it for testing. Since we want to try to match the LQ, we, uh, compress the style GAN and PG GAN by 40% of JPEG compression. So these are our, uh, our results. We compared six different uh, state-of-the-art methods. And uh, overall, our method was the best to perform. And even in the defect in the wild data set, our model uh, was almost performing 70%. And since uh, others were below 65 or 62. So, so actually the second best model was F3Net and it wasn't that much, it, we didn't saw that much difference. They also, they utilize frequency based and which can be, which can, uh, which is transforming the image into a frequency, uh, frequency space. And they are utilizing that uh, information to classify the image. And actually we can use this uh, later when we are pre-processing it, which is a very good uh, way to distinguish the defect data sets. Uh, secondly, we also did some ablation studies. For our backbone classifiers, we try three different classifiers. One was ResNet 152 and second one uh, exception, which uh, Forensics++ plus plus uh, data says that the exception was the best, so we also tried it. And EfficientNet was also showing very good results on detecting uh, defects, so that's why we tried it. But among those three, the exception was the best performer, so we selected exception 
to compare with the SOTA methods. And comparing the single uh, self example and best scale selection, actually uh, SE was uh, better. So we also selected SE for our final uh, results. So that's why we have BZNet with SE here and the backbone classifier is exceptional. After uh, training all the models, we also wanted to see where the model focus on the image on different scales. So if you look at the left part, we compare with exception, which is a baseline model, only trained with 128 and 128. And our BZNet is trained with 128, 128, and plus the SR images, which is 192 and 256. If you look at the red part, which is activated from the model, you can see that it is very different from all different scales. So in 128, it tries to focus on the most of the facial part, but when you go inside, uh, when you go larger and larger, it tries to uh, focus on the little bit more on the facial expressions and like a little bit narrowed down. So it was very interesting when we are trying to see the class activation maps with our model. So it shows that BZNet can utilize various information from different scale images. Uh, to conclude our work and summarize, so we propose branch zooming network, which we ha will have n different branches to enhance the low qualities. And we utilize those low quality images to train our classifier. So, and after, uh, the reason, uh, sorry, the reason why we could do this is thanks to the global pulling layers of uh, recent CNN-based models. We were able to train the model with multi-scale images, and we also found out that our model was the best performer on, on real-world defect in the wild dataset, which is not even trained, and we do not even know uh, how it's generated. We don't know which kind of generation method is used. So multi-scale learning is, I think, it's a very new area and not a lot of people are trying to use it because the conventional thought is to resize the image before passing it through the CNN-based classifier. So I think it has a very good potential to push the limitations. So thank you for listening to our presentation. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Please use the hands tool or the chat thread to ask any questions. Is there any questions from the audience? No. So the, the one question I have is on the, I think on the ablation study, which is I think super interesting data to, to look at. It would be also interesting to, to see the performance in terms of computational cost, you know, because you're, you're saying that oh, yes. adoption of this uh, is limited. I think part of it, at, at least from a corporate standpoint is like the, how expensive these approaches are, right? It would be good to, yes. to ask data on this, right? Uh, yeah, thank you for. Jordan, sure you have top of top of your head. So if we are talking about I don't know, uh, you know, uh, linear kind of computational cost, or 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 we are talking sublinear. I think you see that, that that kind of detail would be interesting. Not sure if you have it uh, top of your head. Oh yeah, that's a, actually a very good point. Uh, since speed is also a very important problem, and also uh, memories, so we haven't uh, exp uh, do did some experiments on those kind of aspects. So I think that's a really good problem and we should do that in our future studies. Awesome. Um, any other questions? We are uh, just like uh, in time to finish the session. Uh, any other question? We have the speakers here, so you can feel free to chat with them or ask questions. If not, since we are out of time, uh, we are going to conclude the session. I wanted to uh, thank Avisek Dash for uh, volunteering and helping uh, the session run very smoothly. Thank you for your hard work here and uh, you know adding all the speakers and running the videos. Thank you very much for this. Also, I wanted to thank the speakers for constraining themselves to the allocated time and for answering my questions <laughs> and, uh, and for running very smooth presentations. Thank you for that. And finally, I wanted to thank, we have uh, Chiara on the room, uh, Ricardo Baeza Yates and Jenna Matthews for organizing the Web for Good uh, track. Okay. Thank you very thank much you. for your uh, time. Thank you. And have a good day.